As mass atrocities are reported in Ukraine, thousands of people marched yesterday at the former site of another act of barbarity. Coinciding with Israel's National Holocaust Memorial Day, more than 2,000 people gathered in Poland on Thursday at what once was the Auschwitz concentration camp. Among them was Poland's president, who walked arm in arm with a survivor of the Holocaust. Speaking at the ceremony, he denounced Russia's war on Ukraine, saying, quote, we are here to show that every nation has the sacred right to life. In fact, U.S. Ambassador to Poland Mark Brzezinski says for Poland, the Ukraine war is, quote, 1939 again. Since Russia's invasion, Poland has opened up its border to more than 2 million Ukrainian refugees. Morning Joe's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Dave Campbell, was in Warsaw to witness the country's major medical and humanitarian crisis and all the efforts to help. With billions in aid going to Ukraine and millions of refugees crossing the border into Poland, U.S. Ambassador Mark Brzezinski, only appointed this past December, is now at the center of the worst humanitarian crisis of the past few decades. In the last 10 weeks, we've had almost 100 members of Congress. We've had the President of the United States, the Vice President of the United States, the Secretary of State twice, and the Secretary of Defense twice. This crisis is not just a Polish problem. It's an international problem, and it's important for the Americans to join in and share in solving this problem, and for the rest of the world to do so as well. Not only has Mark met with government officials, he's met with several private sector companies contributing to Ukrainian aid, like Uber. They were the first company through the door when the crisis broke out on February 24th. And they said, we're seeing the people coming to the border. How can Uber jump in by making financial contributions, by arranging rides? And they have literally saved thousands of people. At the East Railway Station in Warsaw, Ambassador Brzezinski and I spoke with NGOs running the Transition Center, which provides an intermediary safe haven and resources after the long, arduous journeys of the displaced Ukrainians. The refugees have been on their way for the three to four days. Many of them didn't have any, any proper food, and some of them are just coming, coming with two bags. That's all they could take. People have to lay on the floor of, of a train carriage yeah. because there's such a shelling. How are you triaging? the health and health care needs when the refugees arrive here. For the time being, we are looking only at some really basic health care needs in this particular point. Because if people have been on the road for the last two or three days, if people who are really sick, they seldom can make such They're a still long back there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We are making a lot of medical evacuations from uh, Lvov and other cities in western Ukraine. This young boy, Maxim, himself a refugee, is volunteering for his fellow Ukrainians. I'm a translator and uh, I help Ukrainian, Ukrainians who was also managed to move uh, in Poland from Ukraine because of war. Did you leave some family behind when you came here? Yeah, yeah, my whole family in Ukraine now. Joanna from the Norwegian Refugee Council underscored the importance of ongoing financial support for the organizations assisting millions of Ukrainians. We need to remember that the funding is drying up and it's extremely important to replenish it right now so that we can scale up their response. And from what we are hearing, there are massive concerns that with the new wave of displacement, these people arriving, they're going to be even more vulnerable and even more traumatized than people we've seen coming to date. It's absolutely shocking and it's absolutely it's simply emotionally challenging to be here in my own country, helping people who are fleeing war, just like my grandparents were fleeing war. These parallels were on the forefront of Ambassador Brzezinski's mind when he spoke at the Warsaw Holocaust Memorial. Eight decades later, literally right next door to Poland, we are witnessing the horrors of unjust brutality against innocent people who want to live peacefully. In 2022, the entire world sees the suffering of millions of Ukrainians, but we also see all of Poland choosing action. Today, when the whole Polish society, the non-government organizations, the government, the local governments are all helping millions of Ukrainians who come to Poland, I think that there is a certain silver lining 
to that cloud because maybe some people are actually drawing lessons from the past. Ambassador Brzezinski visited two such organizations taking action, the SOK Foundation and Little Chef, who partnered to cook food for refugees. So every two weeks we have refugees cooking for refugees. As of the second day of the war, we've been cooking and helping and distributing food. How is your group supported? We are taking donations because our goal is to work long term. This is a situation which will not go away. And it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. The Polish people are stepping up for the people of Ukraine in places like this, in kitchens, in apartment buildings, in big cities, in little towns. The Poles are inviting Ukrainians into their apartments and homes. And it's a national policy to bring Ukrainians into Polish homes. Really very good. With displaced Ukrainians now making up 10% of Poland's population, the funding of NGOs is crucial to sustaining refugee support in the country. We don't want Poland to become destabilized by this crisis. And tragically, I think Putin knows that it's not just through missiles being thrown at a country that can destabilize a country. He can push people into a country as well to destabilize it. Thankfully, what we're seeing in Poland is tremendous stability. This, for Poland, is 1939 again. The Poles are looking to the rest of the world for help and to understand that this is not just a Polish problem, this is an international problem, and it's important for the Americans and others to join. Morning, Joe. Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Dave Campbell reporting from Poland. And